Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alana from Win Win. And I'm Amanda from Win Win. That was flawless, Amanda. <laughs> and today we are talking to you about the things that I wish that I knew before getting into the mining industry. I started two weeks after I turned 18, went out there, and uh, I'll tell you what, with some of the clients that we're working with right now, this is the exact information that we are giving them to help them when they're going out to the mines for the first time. Hey, Amanda. Absolutely. And it's also information that you just might not even think is valuable, but until you get out there, you're like, that's exactly why the girls spoke about that. And that's exactly why um, we, I did, they, they gave that advice. So absolutely. These are some really great, powerful tips, um, but also just some really great um, things that you might have never considered before. 100%. I remember going out to the, the airport for my first swing was the most terrifying thing of my whole life. I was like, got myself into, you're going out there blind. Unless you know people who can like, you know, give you this advice, then it can be quite terrifying. So let's get into it with number one, which is, I think is one of the most important ones is FIFO just is not for everyone. The mining industry is not for everyone. If you're the sort of person where you can't handle being away from your partner or your kids or your dog like me or your bed, um, you're going to miss out on everything, right? Basically, you can, if you name it, like a birthday, a celebration, wedding. everything, yeah, a wedding, like Christmas, you're going to miss out on it all. You need a certain personality to be FIFO to be able to handle that because it's like you're in a little bit of a fishbowl. You're out there with the same people talking about the same stuff, doing the same job for two weeks at a time, 12 hour days. It's hot as hell. There are 10 billion flies out there who are your new best mates. <laughs> And on that flies, you need to have, if you are not a patient person, I would not recommend going out into the, into the FIFO industry because the flies is probably one of the most underspoken um, issues or challenges or hard things that is out there. And they will start at five o'clock in the morning and these little baby ones get stuck under your sunglasses. And it is the most frustrating thing that a man or a woman can ever experience and the flies can just literally destroy someone's soul. God, yeah. I remember driving buses on Barrow and I'd get down to where the, like, the pier was, open the door and, like, next minute there's 20 billion flies flying in there and you're, like, chasing them around with the pre-start book. There's, like, smashed dead bodies, flies on your windscreen. You're like, oh, this is just disgusting. And don't and forget... Email. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. And, yeah, and don't forget all the snakes and the random, like, bung arrows and stuff like that. It took me quite a surprise for somebody who's never done FIFO to go out there and be like, why the hell is this, like, enormous six-foot lizard just sitting there with a, with a tail of another one coming out of its mouth? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it can be a little bit terrifying. So I'll just reiterate that. Right, some personalities just are not made for FIFO. I've seen guys... Go out, go out there and 24 hours they are begging to get flown back out again. They just cannot handle it. So you're the sort of, sort of personality where you may be a little bit uh, dependent on somebody else or you're not good with get, being chucked into completely uncomfortable situations. Maybe FIFO ain't for you. Yeah, yeah. All right, Matt, anything to elaborate on, Amanda, or should we kick it off with number two? Number two, get yourself a good accountant. Now, this is super important. There's a couple of reasons why it's super important because you want to have um, not only someone that's providing you with some support in terms of those finances and understanding where that money is going, but also that has an invested interest in supporting your future. Go in with a plan, right? It's like the people that do really well out of FIFO are the people that go, this is my time frame. This is what I want to achieve and get out. You will find people in the industry that this is their life. This is what all they know. Their life is actually up on site, not back at home with their families. So make sure you have your super sorted. Make sure you're actually, if possible, contributing more into your super. You know, speaking to our um, our partnership with Jesse, making sure that you are actually like really kind of leveraging these partnerships that we have. Everyone who, who doesn't know who Jesse is, he's our prospering uh, property guy. He basically helps FIFO workers to minimise their tax and invest in property long term so they can get out uh, like faster. And like that is the main thing. You are going to get smashed with so much tax. You will just go out there. It's going to be disheartening. Sorry to interrupt, Amanda. Um, I'm going to go for it. 
And it can literally, I've gone out there and some years I've paid seventy, eighty thousand dollars in tax. And it's just like, am I doing this again? When mm. you see these guys living it up on the doll in Perth, like, you know, uh, smoking their weed and doing whatever, and then you're like, why am I working my ass off? So mm. have a good strategy and exit plan. I think that's where you're going with that one, hey? And a good, yep, absolutely. And a good accountant's going to know what he can claim, what you can claim, and making sure we're, we're reducing that tax as much as possible. Um, oh. Third one for you. Yeah, next one. Okay, and this is me because, like, I'm super paranoid and I've seen some horrendous things. Amanda and I were just talking about this at a site that we used to be at together. Take your own linen, please, for the love <laughs> of God. If you're not going to take your own linen, the second you get up to site, whip back that linen and have a look. I have literally found period blood, head sweat, um, pubic hairs, everything, all the most disgust, disgusting stuff. And I can tell you, my hat goes off to the housekeepers. I know how hard they work, but still, some of them, it can get a little bit like, eh, lose interest or maybe forget to change the doona cover. Oh, it looks okay. But I, ugh. one side I went to, which I'm not going to mention, I was absolutely disgusted. I went in there after, you know, flying up. You're like, you know, you know what you do. You get on the plane at 5 a.m., so you've got to be up at 3. But so do your whole day um, shift and then go back to a room and you're like, what is this hot mess? And it was the most disgusting room I've ever had. And if you do come across that because you haven't taken your own linen up there and leave it in storage, by the way, yeah, um, make sure you complain. Like, seriously, you do go not to have the to the admin, up, yeah, go to the admin yeah, you, desk. If admin's not open, go to the bar. They yes. the, the catering and facilities management run the whole facility. So you just go and find it and it needs to get changed immediately. Yeah, or security or management. The last time that happened to me, I went to the admin directly. I called them up and then I get I was like, get the, get the cleaning supervisor out here right now. Cleaning supervisor's flown out. So the manager comes out and he's like, and I was like, this is disgusting. Would you sleep in this? And then I made him go and get me all new linen. So, yeah, and that's only a time because I didn't take my own up because I was going to really leave. Anyway, that's another story. Um, so make sure, like, have a, like take your own linen if you have the ability to do so. I know some people will be like, oh, yeah, but I don't have my own locker or I don't have much room. But if you have the ability to do it, I highly suggest taking your own, 100%. Which kind okay. of comes into our next one which has a little bit of a little bit of a spin on it but be nice to the catering staff guys you know it's it's a hard job it's a super hard job um they're probably getting paid generally you know it can be 20 to 30 to 50 percent less than you um they're still under the same conditions so they're still away from their family still having to work 12 hour days where you know and they are still you know um all, all out there for the same reason. So, you know, if, you're, if your room hasn't been cleaned by the certain time, just be a, a little bit accommodating that sometimes they might be working on 40 to 50 rooms for the day. You know, it might be just a little bit of, um, you know, at the bar, making sure that they're, they're trying to put out those coffees and serve those beers as quickly as possible. And the chefs, the chefs, you know, they are, they are, you know, when the food, the food is all in relation to the amount of money the mining company will actually pay them per person on site. So that is what that chef is actually operating under. It's not the chefs and it's not the kitchen. That is actually the approved menu that has been provided by the company. I'm Anything quiet. to add on that one, Alana? Oh my God, I could go to town on this one. I 1 million percent agree. Like, um, and you know what? The chefs work, the catering staff works harder than you. If you're an operator right now, they work harder than you. And yeah, they're earning significantly less, but they are on their feet all day. The chefs always work overtime. I've never known a chef that hasn't worked their time and over just to make sure that, you know, they're dealing with lack of stock or, you know, start like being short staffed or a ton of different things. But the whole thing is, should you just be nice to people because, you know, that's the right thing to do. But these are the people that can get you the extra food if you want. They can help you out yes. with, um, you know, oh, can you, can I have a broom for my room? Like, so I can like clean it myself to make your job can easier. Can I upgrade or... my room? Can I change my room to an end room? And if you okay. don't know what an end room is, an end room is the room that you want. So you don't have a neighbor on either side. God, yes, 100%. Or, you know, like other sites that I've been to where, like, the laundry ladies, oh, hey, if I put my laundry in here and leave you a fiver, do you reckon you can just make sure that it goes into the dryer so I can pick <laughs> yeah, it up on yeah. the way back? 
Like yeah. it's just really little things like this. You shouldn't ask them anyway, but do it because you can actually benefit out of it. Correct. Oh, Correct. Okay, Correct. cool. Yeah, what is the next one? Right, okay, the next one is number five, which is don't take stuff personally when you're up on site, right? You are going to come across some total and utter weirdos who you might not have had any exposure to in the rest of your life, like these people, and you're like, what the hell? Everyone's got a different personality, and uh, the way that you react to things, try not to internalise and, and, like, you know, go over things again and again and again. Being in the mines, you're in a fishbowl. You're there for two weeks, maybe more, depending, 12-hour day, somebody says something to you in a different tone or whatever, it can be going on in your little head, ticking over all day long. I've had that happen to me. I've seen, like, some massive uh, crew blow-ups and, like, just dramas and stuff like that. You're up there to make money. You're not up there necessarily to make friends. If you make friends of, in the, you know, um, on the site, that is great. But uh, try not to take stuff personally. Your real life is at home. You are at work just so that you can focus on your real life and make your real life the best life possible by earning that money. You're not there for the fun of it, unless you are, which some people, yeah, like Amanda said, long-termers. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's also like really important that to say that everyone's on their own journey up there and they're all doing, we don't know what's going on in everyone's personal life. And um, there can be some really stressful moments for people. And this is, you know, especially I think with our families that, you know, have to have to be working away and we don't know what's happening at home. Um, so just making sure that, yeah, we're not taking things personally. I think that's amazing advice, Alana, not to take things personally. Um, and, you know, can, can I just add to that as well? Like um, bullying on site as well, such a big one. And, you know, you don't have to take shit from anybody up on site. Like, seriously, if your supervisor's being a dick, you can, like, escalate that through the right channels. If somebody you might not get along, just make sure that you're adult about it. Like, have a chat of, ch chat to them. If they're being a dick to you, just be, pull them aside, say, hey, how you going? Have I done something to, like, piss you off or whatever it might be? But no bullshit. These people up there, we're all on the same journey. We're all going through the same 12-hour monotonous, like, I don't know. Like, yeah, so if you are experiencing bullying, make sure you escalate it through the correct channels. Nobody should be dealing with um, being bullied on site. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Um, and number six or seven are we up to? I don't even know. I've lost count. That's all right. I'm, I'm going to kick it off with have a really good healthy hobby. Now we can get sucked into the wet mess. And if you don't know what a wet mess is, the wet mess is where the alcohol is served at nighttime, you know, the bar. Um, there is a, um, I would suggest, you know, there's loads of things that you can be doing outside of that and also outside of your actual swing. So when you're actually on your break, but you know, most most facilities are going to have a gym. Most facilities, you're going to be able to go for a run. Most facilities are going to have internet. So you can be learning a language. You can be studying. You can be, you know, sitting back, kicking back and watching Netflix or, or one of the others. But really, like, utilize your time well. What is those things that you've always said that you don't have time for? And actually apply them when you finish the day or, or, or when you wanted to be able to just chill. And then, you know, really take advantage of that time when you're at home as well. Like there's so much that can be done, especially when it comes to some of the bigger sites will have sports fields. You know, they'll have tennis courts and, and ovals that you can go kick the football and and play and around libraries and pool tables and darts and you know yeah. did, you ever go to, did you ever go to barrow amanda no not barrow no so they had the most incredible outdoor gyms all around the clusters you could go play golf you could go play like oh this God. like everything and it was just crazy different pools different gyms like music rooms so like yeah you don't want to isolate yourself when you're up there and it can be easy to I'm tired, I've just finished work, 12 hours, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to talk to my crew because I've been hanging out with them all day, hearing the same shit all day long. Uh, but, yeah, and obviously, like, you know, when I'm not saying I, I get to go to the wedding. I loved it. You know, it was a good I chance. I did too. To yeah. yeah. We're not saying don't go. Yeah. Don't That's go seven nights a week. Yeah, 100%. So try to find, I, I agree, try to find a good hobby. Um, something outside so you've got you know you don't want to be like just getting all depressed and going back and to your room and having nothing to do right correct so that's, you don't. That's 100% right I'm just going to chuck in the next one we'll go to it which is 
not everyone is your friend on site. There are some real, yeah. uh, you know, everyone's like living their own journey. Everyone's up there, got their own, you know, goals of what they're trying to achieve. Some people, they get jaded in what they've been doing because they've been doing it forever. You know, they've got the three Thailand brides or whatever. And, um, you know, they've been up there, they're long-termers and that is their life. Like we kind of touched on this as well, but just, you know, like unless you want everything that you're saying to go around the camp, I'd probably keep it, you know, like to yourself or your best mates that you are, are up there with. Like, you know, I know with me, I have made some amazing friends for life in my mining journey, um, including you, Amanda. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, 100%. So like just, you know, make your friends, go out of, go out of your way to actually socialise with people that potentially are on different crews or different companies as well because, yeah, you would be so shocked at where that can get you, I think, on the mines, which probably I might have segued into the next one, hey? Yeah, network, network your way into your next job. So this is something that we always talk about to our clients as, you know, like for those people that especially that are starting with entry-level positions. So anyone starting on an entry-level position, they see it as, Oh, you know, like, yes, it's your foot in the door and take it seriously. Like it's a fantastic opportunity that so many people are actually really trying to do at the moment, but how do you network your way in? How do you do that? Well, when you're at breakfast, you go and sit with someone every different, every single time, ask them what company they're from, what they're doing. You know, if you're seeing the same people in the dining room at nighttime, go and sit with them and ask them what they do. Same as at the wet mess, same as at the gym, like really kind of expand yourself out from your comfort zone and from your crew to make sure that you're really kind of, you know, meeting someone new each week, because this is where that those relationships are going to start. This is taking an interest in what someone else is doing and understanding what those roles are and understanding what those companies are. So you can then understand where those opportunities and those career pathways are. Oh, okay. You guys are from Blast Crew. Okay. What are the positions, you know, available? Oh, you guys work in the civil. How do, how do I get a job on the, on the machines? You know, it's really about those relationships and there's a large portion of positions that aren't even advertised on Seek that are going to these people that are making these relationships, aren't they, Alana? A million percent. And like I'll just say as well, we get a lot of people come to us and the first thing that they say is, I do not want a utility job. And to me, I'm like, listen here, most people's entry level first, way, uh, first job into the mining industry is as a utility. Yeah, it doesn't pay the most, but it's a step in the right direction. And at the moment, with the fact that there's you're competing with thousands, if not tens of thousands of people for some of these jobs, uh, the, the second that you're up on site, the whole world opens up for you, right? And companies love the fact that you've got that actual site experience, you're aware of the environment, being away from your mates, the safety aspects. So companies like BHP, they love taking on their utilities for their dump truck traineeship. So if you're one of those people who's 100% um, I want a dump truck traineeship only, I'm not going to go in or consider any other options, then the person who doesn't care and they're making their way into the industry in any pathway whatsoever, they're going to get the job over you. Like that's like a simple fact. So don't be a utility snob. That's my first one, my main one. And just on that, I'm probably one of millions of examples where I actually purchased a property that's less than 50 metres away from the beach as a utility. So don't discount the opportunities of where a utility starts. Like I started as a utility and moved into a, into the bar and then into site admin and then as a village manager. So, and then now have a property that's, yeah, less than 50 meters away from the beach. So absolutely don't discount that. It's a stepping stone. It's a, it's a mechanism to get you to your end financial goal or your career pathway that you're looking for. 100%. And if you're watching this right now, you're only watching this from the age of 18. I went out there as a utility. That was my first job. I think that was your first job as well, Amanda. That's most yeah. people's first job. And then I had an amazing 16, 17-year career, which led me to save up money to like create this business. So right now, if you're watching this, you can thank that utility company, which is no longer in uh, existence. But that does also, what you just said, Amanda, reiterate the fact of save your money. You can go and buy as many jet skis or update your car every single year, but there's a massive difference between buying something that is going to be an asset and buying something that is just completely worthless the second that you buy it. If you've bought a new car ever, you'll know this. The second you drive it out, bang, it's lost all its uh, value. So again, 
definitely save your money and just get your foot in in any capacity, whether it's a utility or whether it's your dream job as a dump truck operator. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, so the next one I want to talk about is uniforms, and this is like it. this is take when you are first issued your uniforms from your company, ask for more, ask for double. All right. Um, and there's multiple reasons behind this because they potentially are only going to issue you two or three, which means that you would need him to be do, doing washing every two days. If you don't want to be doing it. And then also so if time you're consuming. every two days, you're having to fight for a washing machine. They're not always going to be, they're not always going to be free. So making sure that you are getting as many uniforms as possible. And if they, if you don't have uniform supply, just get yourselves a few backup pants as well. Like in a few, um, a few backup shirts because you don't want to be in the laundry the whole time. Yeah. And while we're on the laundry, take your own laundry powder. That stuff yes. used to be itchy as like, oh my God, massive one. And also laundry etiquette. Amanda, what do you have to say about that? That's what oh, I mean. It depends <laughs> on what you think is the right. Oh, <laughs> is you mean taking out people's clothes? Yeah, that. 100%. Yeah. So you'll find now, that people will take out your clothes out of the machine, and yeah. leave them on the dryer or leave them in the basket or even leave them on the floor, like on the table. Because if you are not there when that machine stops and people are waiting, expect your clothes to be put on the floor or taken out, um, which you could have your bras and your, your knickers and you know, whatever you have there, expect that to be on the floor or on the table or wherever when you come back in. Which isn't a nice feeling when you walk in there and you can see your stuff everywhere. Oh, a hundred percent. And also just be aware there are some real freak shows up there that'll Freaks. steal women's knickhead knickers yes. and like bras and shit. And so yeah, like that's well, I'm a French. Um so yeah, just be just be careful of that as well. A little hack as well that I used to do when I was doing my washing is, well, actually, there's quite a few. Um, one, I used to pay for people to do it because I was doing the catering stuff. Uh, but another one is if you go in there and let's say if you've just done your washing, there's hardly anyone in there, um, nobody else has their stuff in the dryers, split your like washing into multiple dryers and bang, 10 minutes later, you can have the whole lot done. I know that's oh, not that only a good hack. It's also a hog. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm only saying if there's nobody else in there. If the other, if it's full, do not do that. That's just a big jerk way of doing it. But yeah, um, again, making friends. But if you're on a camp, on that's got, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah, it used to work Especially really because like where I was. So I, I started on the rail camps and I was on the, Alana and I met on the, the rail camp when FMG was doing the rail duplication. So there was fly camps everywhere. And then I went to the rail camps with FMG and then into cloud break. But, you know, some of those smaller camps will have, yeah, not, they might only have 120 staff or maybe, you know, when things are low, it could be only like 50, 50 people on site. Sorry, not, not staff. Um, so yeah, you've got the, the ability to be able to, to have a much more relaxed environment. So you can put your washing in five, five washing machines. Oh, sorry, dry. Is that talking about? I did that at one of the bigger ones, ironically, only because I could. I was working around the camp at the this time. Not doubt me. I, I'm not. I am not shocked by this. <laughs> hey, you've got to be creative when you get out there. If you hate sitting around waiting for washing, but anyway, correct. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is not to fuck up. Like, and I mean this in the most uh, probably brutal way possible, but the industry is so small. Everybody knows each other, right? There are technically not official ERMS blacklists anymore, but there are company internal blacklists and everyone knows each other. You see the same people bouncing around from different companies to do that site and this company and blah, blah, blah. So you can actually get unofficially blacklisted if, let's say, your name comes across to the, the admin or the recruiter's like desk and they're like, well, hang on a minute, this this guy lied on his resume, he was an asshole, he was like, you know, getting pissed and he was like getting into fights on site. It's mm -hmm. a small industry, right? It's smaller than you may know and your name, once it's tarnished, good luck. Again, why it's also really important to be speaking to the nicely to the catering staff because they are the middlemen and they are the people that know and connect with everyone as well. So yeah, I think that's a really important one, especially if you do want that career career progression, because that's going to lead into the next one, which everyone's watching. All right. Yeah. 
make sure that you are aware that if you are going to the wet mess every night of your swing, people are, people know that. If you are having to go wake up a little bit earlier in the morning to make sure that you're blowing zero, people are watching. Everyone's watching. Um, people nice. know that, um, you know, that you're there every night. People know that what time you go into bed. It is a very small community. Um, and if someone's not watching you, someone's talking about you. So making sure that, yeah, you just, um, you know, you mind in your own business and you're doing the right thing. You're going to bed at the right time. And, yeah, you're not, you know, flaunting around the wet mess every night, which that's not to say that there's that there's anything wrong with that. But, um, just making sure you're aware that everyone's always watching, especially if it's especially if it's you're wanting to work your way into a new company. Wouldn't you agree, Alana? Million percent. We used to have a like one of the last jobs that I went to. The guy was at the wedding every single night, and then oh, I'm sick. Oh, I've missed the bus. It's like bullshit. You pounded fucking nine drinks at the wedding last night. Let's all calm down. Sorry for the rant. Mm. Sorry for the sorry, That's but. True. It and is true. someone that used to work in admin right next to the breathalyzer, the communal breathalyzer, the amount of guys that I would be going, I would be seeing, right? So, you know, I'd be in there at four o'clock. They'd be in there at 4.05, not starting work for another hour, but making sure that they're blowing zeros before they start work. And then they'd be like coming back five minutes later going, is it there? Is it there? Am I at zero yet? No. And they'd be coming back. So just make sure that you're aware that everyone, someone's always watching. Yeah. It's a fishbowl. Everyone knows what, everyone knows everyone's business. And the whole thing is you try to stay out of the drama, stay out of the politics, but sometimes you just get dragged into it. It's like, what? I'm just like playing my own game here. I'm just up here to do my job. But some mm. people have nothing better to do than try to stir the pot, especially if they're in the purple circle, drag your name down the mud. Mm. Uh, but you know what? Karma always gets those people. So, yeah. Well, yes, that's we're big believers in karma, aren't we? I love it. Oh, yes, we um, sure I want to touch on one that, that you spoke about earlier, which I actually was, uh, uh, I was impacted by this, and that's the importance of having a Telstra SIM. Now, we all think that we would go, yeah, that's pretty obvious, having a Telstra SIM. But sometimes you actually don't go prepared. And my first ever swing where I was at the airport and we went to our fly camp in Briney, um, it was a four and one swing. And for the first, it was my first ever five for a job and my first ever swing, I was without a mobile phone for the four, four weeks. And it was brutal. It was hell. And um, I would strongly recommend that anyone gets a Telstra, Telstra phone. Definitely. If you are coming over to the country or if you are in the country, just know this, right? Telstra is the number one communications company across the whole of Australia. And I'm saying, uh, trust me, I'm not a fan, but I'm just saying out on site, so they have the, got the greatest range of communication. So get a Telstra SIM, use that. Trust me, you'll thank us later. And if you also want to know about exactly like diving deeper into what to take to site, et cetera, there is a whole course we've created, which is preparing for your first site. And this takes you through like what you do before you leave site, what you ask the recruiter for, um, what to expect for your first day, what all the accommodation is like, what to take, literally the hacks of what to pack to maximize the What? I've only got 10 kilos. How the hell am I going to fit all my, my uniforms into that? So especially if, like what Amanda's saying, you take extras, which is what I did. <laughs> so, but anyway, that is one of the courses that we do have. If you want access, I might just drop a link underneath the, this this video somewhere. And the final one, I think it's the final one. Oh, I've got one more after this one that I that I thought would be nice as well. To so, so you do your one. Love that. Love that. Okay. Um, my one that it took me a long time to be able to get my little head around the fact that uh, of, of this one. So it is love the safety aspect of being on site. I was always that person mm. who was like, oh, fucking hell, I'm doing this. Pardon my French again, I swear a lot. Um, I'm doing the same thing safety day police. in, the day safety out. Police. Yeah. yeah, why do I have to do like five, three take fives, blah, 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 signing on to these JHAs all the time. Um, and to me, that was the, that is totally the wrong way of thinking of thinking about it. If you're up there, it's 40 degrees, and you've got the opportunity to sit on your ass drinking some water, or in in one of my best mates' uh, cases, chugging a ciggy, and not not being like, "Why are you doing this?" Blah blah blah. Bang! You've got your little take five book there. Oh, okay, there's post-it notes, post-it stickers, um, and you can just sit there writing out a take five. 
you are not going to get in trouble if you go back to the office and you've got nine take fives. And I know a guy who I used to work with, this guy used to be handing in 10 to 15 take fives per shift. And then we'll be paying out on him. It's like, hang on, he's really just pulling the piss. Uh, but, you know, yeah, he was doing... he's having a every time. Yeah, well, he wasn't a smoker. He was just a big piss taker. Anyway, so he was <laughs> sitting in the nice air-conned cab while he was riding out a take five while other people would just jump out for me would just jump out of the truck and start doing the job, you know. So love the yeah. safety aspect. It could legitimately save your life one day. And, like, it took me a long time to learn that and to embrace that. But um, just just remember, if you can sit there for five minutes justified doing something that's going to keep you safe potentially and then you can have a nice drink of water while you're doing it or a dairy, um, yeah, just Love that. I think Anything really like that? Important. I think it's really important that you've highlighted that. And especially as a as a as a um village manager on site, you get to see a lot of things. So I've experienced um a couple of companies that have had near misses, and I've experienced a couple of um companies that have um had some significant things happen on 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 their work sites. And in addition to that experience, go through ICAM investigation. So it's not um, it's there for, and I think sometimes we do take that little bit of a resistance approach when we first get into it because it's a drag and it's not cool and it's not fun and we've got obligations. But at the end of the day, it's there to make sure that we're getting on the plane. You know, yeah. we're going home. We're able mm -hmm. to spend the money that we've earned. It's not there for any other reason than to make sure that we are going home to our families. So absolutely, I, 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 I'm, I'm a big safety person now. Have you heard the care retention? So C A R E. No. What's this one? Other arts retain employment. Right. I've seen somebody who got into an incident, didn't sign on to the JHA, didn't do a take five, ended up sitting sitting around for like an hour and a half waiting for while everything was getting investigated, and then basically because she didn't do those two things and didn't follow the correct protocol, bye bye, next plane mm, out of there. So, seat. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what it's called, guys. If you're if you're getting sent home, you're going on a window seat home on a one way ticket home, never to return. Enjoy. And good luck. And good luck getting if you breach a safety. Good luck getting back into the industry. A hundred percent, because everybody knows, and mm. like everyone loves gossiping because they're so bored. So mm. then you will be the the flavor of the day for at least the next week until somebody else does something. So yeah, love that safety aspect. <laughs> And the last one that I wanted to do, which I think is really nice because I actually learned this from another girl that was on site and she used to do it. And that's take something a little bit homely for your room, right? That might be like some pictures of your kids. It might be a nice diffuser that smells nice. It might be a yoga mat. It might be your favorite book or something that, you know, just really kind of just makes you makes that stay inside a three by two room or a three by three room just that little bit more accommodating you know have something personal in there have something that just you know whether it's you know something that just makes you feel that little bit more um connected to the outside world yeah agreed like photos everything you know take your your favorite soap and stuff because those rooms stink no matter how well it's cleaned they stink right so a diffuser that can diffuse that horrific smell um can definitely be beneficial like to your room and just the fact that if you're going away for long swings i know like i was doing four and ones you could get like my four, first four and one i went up at Christmas time, I didn't know anyone, and it was just like this is depressing. So and yeah, and not only that, you can be there for a cyclone, and if you're mm -hmm. in there for a cyclone and you go into lockdown, which I've been through three, um, you can be in that room for three or four days. Yeah, which is not fun. No, but you know what? There's more coming to my brain here. When you get to the site, make sure that you pull the aircon filters out of your aircon. Some companies, like there's a policy where it's like, no, 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 you've got to get the safety guys to come in there. Not safety, sorry, the, the uh, maintenance guys or the cleaners, they have to do it. But I would always rip those suckers out of your aircon. Make sure they're clean because you do not want to be breathing in that dust all night long. And again, my hat goes off to the cleaners and everything, but sometimes they're under the pump or they don't do things like that. And and, you know, I don't want to breathe that in. So I'm sure you yeah. don't either at home. No, no, absolutely not. Right. And one more that just has just come to my mind, which yeah, is actually probably one of the most important things is 
No, and like this is reiterating uh, one of the first ones that we went over. A FIFO is not your life, right? It's not for everyone. If you can't hack it, then like go. There's other ways that you can make money, and there's like probably a thousand people behind you wanting to take your job. But when you're out on site, don't isolate yourself. Make sure that you keep the lines of communication open with the people that matter most to you, the one, the loved ones, your family, your kids at home. No, make sure you take the time out after your shift to be talking to them because, you know, the amount of marriage breakups in the mining industry is just absolutely incredible. And you don't want to be one of those statistics that you go out there with the, um, you know, under the impression of like, I'm going out there for my family to make this money so we can have an amazing life. And then next minute you're out there and instead of calling your wife and kids, you're you're drinking four middies at the bloody uh, wet That's wet right. Mess. Yeah. No, yeah. making sure you're connected. Absolutely. I think that's really important. Really, really yeah. important. I love say. this. I've gone about this all day. I know. It, things keep popping into my mind. Um, I did want to say one thing that I think is really important because there might be some people that don't actually realise that. Now, depending on where you fly to and depending on what site you're going to, you might not be at your site once you get to the air airport. So, they're going to fly from Perth to maybe Port Hedland, or if you go in direct to site, you might fly into like Cloudbreak or one of the one of the places that has an airport. But if you're not, you might be up for a three hour drive on top of that first flight to site or to to Port Hedland. So take that into consideration as well, especially if you're flying from the eastern states. I had a brutal trip where I used to go from the Sunshine Coast down to Brisbane, Brisbane to Perth. You have to stay in Perth the night because Perth doesn't have a 24-hour airport and then go from Perth up to the Pilbara, Pilbara then a three-hour drive into our rail camps. It was not fun. It was not fun. It was not fun at all. Yeah, oh, I totally agree. And like, you know, you just never know what might happen, which is why yeah. it, you need to use your due diligence before you're leaving. If this is your first site, you need to be drilling your recruiter on everything. What's the weight limits on the plane, upon the luggage that I can take up? What do you recommend? Yeah. Can I have a site map? Can I have my supervisor's number? Or like, can I have your number so if I get up there or I miss, or what do you, what do, you do if you miss your plane? Who, who's the point of contact? There are mm -hmm. so much. This could be an all day video, Amanda. We should have just I done know. a live with this. <laughs> but yeah. But I think we've covered oh. off some really important important points. Absolutely, we have. Look, unless you've got anything else that's like popped up. Well, yeah. No. Look, I will say this as well. If you are going to site, um, we've created a ton of different courses on what to expect. And like we delve deeper into exactly what you can take, how you can maximize that 10 kgs that you're given. It's got the best hacks from people who've worked within the mining industry. And this course, it's right, it's, uh, whatever. It's reasonably priced. I don't know how much it is at the top of my head. But yeah, I'm going to drop the link in there. Um, follow Amanda and myself on TikTok for a ton of free content just like this subscribe to the channel and of course if you need help getting your first or next FIFO job if we haven't just put you off uh, feel free to get in contact with our team at info at winwin.com.au we're through our career consultation side of the business we can get anybody into the industry full stop anything to say Amanda? No great talk look forward great. to helping anyone. Absolutely so we'll drop all the links below here thanks for watching and uh, stay whatever Stay whatever wow. on this channel for the next one. Wow.